So I have been ridiculously excited for this build. It's been something that I've been thinking about getting for quite a while now. And I think it's going to be really, really helpful, especially now that I'm going to be doing sort of resin tables and larger things like that. Even if I was to get, I don't know, like a slab of wood or something, flattening it this way is going to be so much easier. So I wanted to try and upgrade this and I went out and bought some linear rails. And here they are. They arrived yesterday and I am beyond excited. So what is a linear rail? Or in this case, a linear rod. You can get many different types of linear rail. Some flat, straight, curved. They all have their own purpose. But the rail consists of a long steel rod or a bar. And in this case, it comes prefixed to a stand like this. The rail has a high polished surface, so the linear bearing can travel along it smoothly. Now let's have a closer look at that bearing. Similar to draw runners, bearings are used to help create exceedingly low friction. Surface contact is reduced, so the bearing glides easily across the fixed rail. Because of their design, they can accept increased load capabilities, meaning I can press down on the bearing, but it will still move easily over the rail. So what can you use linear rails for? You may want to use a linear rail in a CNC, or maybe even a CO2 laser. Or how about a 3D printer? Or anywhere constant moving back and forth is required. Once these are fitted either side of this piece of MDF, I can then put whatever slab that I want to flatten in the middle and then just run it over. And because these are linear rails, it's going to be nice and flat. That's the idea anyway. I'm using two rails in parallel to one another so I can move the router over the piece of wood to flatten one surface or side. Because I've mounted the rails level to each other, I know that the router will cut level with the wood. This setup is therefore incredibly useful. Imagine you have a piece of wood that you've cut for a particular piece of furniture, but because of its size you cannot put it through any of your machines like a thickness or a planer. In this case, you'd need to cut the piece down into smaller boards which would then be able to be machined. That's all well and good, but something like this resin table can't be cut down into smaller pieces. You'd lose too much of its character and of that effect, but you still need to flatten it. Having this setup, I can easily bring the MDF board onto my table saw, put the sliding carriage onto the rails, and I'm ready to start cutting. I also found I needed to shim up the MDF a little bit so I'm just using these washers and they seem to be working extremely well Depending on the thickness of the piece, I can build up the rails by including strips of MDF. I can therefore keep building this up to flatten pretty much any thickness I need. Obviously you need to be a bit sensible with how high you make the sides. If it becomes too tall, you may need to reinforce it somehow. When it comes to the router, I'm using my Triton TRA001. Triton are not a sponsor, but I do love this router. You can see how I've used this in a router table in my other videos. You can of course use any type of router you have but you will be restricted to the size of the bit that you can use. The one I'm using is a two inch wide flat cutting bit. It cuts a large area and paired with the Triton router, it cuts effortlessly. Because of the size of the bit I'm using, I have turned the router speed down to one. I was always taught the bigger the bit, the slower you need the router to be. So in this case, because I'm using one hell of a bit, I want the revs right down to a minimum. This isn't going to affect the cut in the slightest. 
the router will still chew through pretty much anything I put in its path. I'm still getting tear out, but mostly because of the resin, but this rasp bit really isn't any good for resin. I've already placed an order for a carbide bit that I hope will help with this. But unfortunately, it hasn't arrived, so I cannot show you if it's any better or not. So make sure to check out the next video where I'm going to be testing that carbide bit out on an end grain cutting board. The router, however, does move about more than what I'd hope, so I think this is going to be something I need to work on. I have a few ideas of how I can achieve this, one method being to cut a new square base for the router running in grooves in the side of the sled so with friction it should in theory keep the router more stable so I shouldn't have to hold it while pushing the carriage over the rails however the downside to this would be removing it from the sled once I'm finished with it I still want to use the router in my router table and also the MDF table needs storing but if you have any ideas of how you would do it or if you fancy giving this a go yourself I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. As I said at the start of the video, I am rather excited of this new addition to the workshop. I honestly think the possibilities of the linear rails are absolutely endless. I could make a new sled for my high coke mitre saw to cut straight lines, or I could use it with my router in a fixed position to put rabbits or dados into workpieces. Well, I think they're all ideas for other videos, but do expect to see me using this going forward. I sound a little bit excited. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for future videos. The rail consists of so the bearing guides really nice. Depend depending the thickness of the pieces I cut is a two inch wide flat cutting bit. It cut it cuts a large area and pad and paired with the route and paired with the Triton router it cuts effortless effortless it cuts a it cuts effortlessly. It cuts effortless, eff effortlessly.